Kentucky governor says the twister outbreak this past weekend was the worst tornadic event in that state's history. At least four tornadoes touching down in Kentucky. One was on the ground for more than 200 miles alone. State officials believe that 1,000 houses were damaged or destroyed. In Bowling Green, video here is showing dozens of houses are destroyed or heavily damaged. At least 11 people dead so far. More than 80 people have been killed by the storm, but still about 100 people missing. 100 people missing. And Marcus was on vacation last week. Marcus was just north mm -hmm. of where this cold storm was. Yeah, so that tornado that went through Bowling Green, yeah. that's where I went to school at WKU, tracked just north of Campbellsville, Kentucky, which is where we were for my brother's graduation. Yeah. Five miles just northwest. Wow. Significant damage all along the path of that storm. Very, very scary. Just being inside of a mm -hmm. tornado warning yeah. like that, Mm. What's a significant storm moving in? It was very intense. <coughs> Let me show you the storm path of that particular one there that we were looking at. These are the tornado tracks that the Weather Service has pointed out for us, and I just want to make reference to one of the storms. So this is the original storm that hit in Mayfield, Kentucky, but you notice we don't have any other data just yet. That's because they are still surveying that storm damage. I'll show you the general path here in just a moment, but the one that moved into Bowling Green got started in Henry County near Paris. And that's where we had an EF3 tornado hit in Bowling Green. Top winds at least at 150. We were in Campbellsville and it happened just north town of Saloma, Kentucky in northern Taylor County. EF3 with top winds there at 140 miles an hour. So some significant damage happening along that path. That was just one tornado. But here's the one that is considered the quad state tornado. That's the one that's the most significant. The one you just heard about from nightly news there with Lester Holt. That could become the longest tornado track on record at least traveling 200 miles. The record is 219. Either way, this was the storm that did the major damage, at least EF3, and could even be just a bit higher than that. All right, back here at home, a lot of cloud cover today. We we're thankful for the sunshine yesterday, but today clouds have moved in, a sign that we're beginning to see some warmer air, and those clouds are not going anywhere. They're going to remain with us tonight, and they will eventually lead to some showers around the area. Some of you already seeing some of that rain fall right now upper 50s and low 60s but well, let's investigate on the radar here you'll notice some of these showers that are passing through lightning count has stayed at zero as this rain has come through the area we just don't have enough instability to promote any thunderstorms at this point maybe an isolated storm overnight but nothing severe as that continues to ride to the north and to the northeast. As we start to see the greater moisture move in, we'll get another wave of showers to increase in the overnight hours. But look at the moisture dew points jumping back into the 60s. We're looking at air you can wear as we move into the day tomorrow. Future cast for us this evening going to continue to track some of these light showers that will move through. There's 8 o'clock. They'll be scattered around East Texas. 20 30 percent probability. A high chance that you'll at least see some rain, but the significance of that rain should remain relatively low, maybe briefly impacting the roadways. There's early tomorrow morning, a couple of light showers still remaining, but cloudy skies and a strong southerly wind on tap for us as we go into the day tomorrow. We'll have a south wind that will help us warm up into the 70s for the afternoon. Tuesday night, things should quiet down. Maybe some patchy drizzle returning on Wednesday morning, but a, a even stronger wind Wednesday afternoon and I think that's when we'll probably see a little bit more sunshine that should help push temperatures closer to 80 degrees starting Thursday heading into the weekend. That's when rain chances are expected to pick up and look at how much rain we could see. Some areas could pick up one to two inches of rainfall. We'll definitely keep an eye on that could have maybe some minor flooding concerns here in East Texas, but right now a severe risk does not look likely at this point, but there are some days that we'll watch for that possibility of a couple of isolated stronger storms. Thursday, temperatures there in the 70s where we get our first wave of rain. Overnight Friday into Saturday with the cold front. Yeah, with a big temperature drop. Yeah, we could definitely see maybe an isolated strong storm or two. The bigger story, though, will be the rain that we need and the colder temperatures will fall back into the 50s and the 40s by the weekend. So warming up, Neil, these next few days near 80 on Wednesday in Deep East Texas, but shower chances get started on Thursday. 48 on Sunday. Getting colder. Mercy. Focus is